Hey guys, welcome back to Live Your Style. I'm Shara, and today we're gonna talk about the six different mistakes you guys are probably making in your home. You didn't even know it, and I'm gonna show you how to fix it and how to get out of those little ruts and make your home look beautiful and amazing. Don't worry though, I have been a victim to these mistakes as well, but you live and you learn. I'm gonna give you some quick fix tips and hopefully, you guys will be able to do that in a weekend or I don't know, a couple weekends. It'll be fun and exciting and you'll be super happy with how it turns out in the end. Today, like I said, I'm gonna give you six different tips, but I do have a total of 16 mistakes that we make around our house when it comes to decorating that I have on the Live It Journal this week. So if you guys wanna sign up for the Live It Journal, go down and click the link below and you guys can check that out. And if you guys are a part of the LAJ fam, well, check your inbox because you already have that sitting in your email inbox for you. Oh, and for the question of the video, if you guys are a victim of any of these little errors around your home, leave me a comment below of which ones you have committed, things that you've done in your houses, and hopefully these will be ways to help you get out of those ruts and improve your space. If you guys are super excited about this topic and you know that it's gonna be great, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you're new to the Live Your Style family, hit the subscribe button and join our family. We love new subscribers, so join us. Are you guys ready to get started? Let's do it. Okay, the first mistake that people make in their homes, if you guys know me and you've been watching, you can probably guess this one. Use curtains, we added curtains. You know that I love curtains. We added curtains, I suggest using curtains. The first mistake that people make is they hang their curtains way too low. They do not hang their curtains close to the ceiling, they hang them close to the window, which makes the whole house feel like it's like squatted on or like pushed down or just small. And that's not the vibe you want when people walk into your home. You want your eyes to go up and you also want to feel like you're kind of elongating the space. And I also encourage you guys to try to go and lean towards a fabric that isn't super busy. I recommend doing more of a white or maybe like a tan or something that's a little bit more easily matchable and kind of can transition with your furniture or your pillows or whatever room you're working on. I actually found my curtains from Ikea. They are the Vivian or Viv... Vivian? It's a V-I-V something, something, something. I'll link them below, you guys can check them out. They have, I think, two different sizes. I got the tallest size. The longest option gave me like six inches or something additional, or maybe five inches. So I did a no sew hem trick, which I have a video on. I will link it below, you guys can check that out. And basically it's just a way for you to hem your curtains without having to sew them. And you want them to lightly dust the ground. You don't want them to puddle. Hopefully that'll help you guys put your rods about two inches away from the ceiling get your curtains on there and have them touch the ground. And that's a really easy way to make a drastic improvement in your space. So start there. The second mistake that people often make is they do not measure their space before they purchase, before they go to shop. So what I always recommend, you guys have heard me say this, is whether you make a floor plan, like draw out a floor plan before you go shopping, or if you just wanna go, okay, I know that the dining table's going here, and I know that I have 65 inches to fill, write that down like in the notes on your phone. That way when you're out shopping and you see a great deal for a dining table, you can have your measuring tape in your purse and you can measure the size and the width of the dining table and then you know, oh yeah, this would totally fit and it's, a, it's on sale so I should get it. You wanna make sure your, your furniture is proportional and the best way to do that is to make your measurements before you go shop and shop wisely. The third mistake you guys might be making in your home is you may have picked the wrong rug size for the space. Just like with curtains, you know, you want to elongate the curtains. With the wrong size rug, if you pick too small of a rug, it can actually make your space feel a little bit dwarfed and a little bit scrunched together as opposed to widening out the space and allowing the room to feel a little bit larger. Specifically within like a living room space, you wanna make sure that your rug goes at least halfway under the furniture. You want the rug, if you were to imagine a big rectangle, it would fill in that open space. It doesn't have to keep going past the length of the furniture. It doesn't have to go completely underneath the furniture unless you have a ginormous space that doesn't necessarily look bad but you definitely do not want to just get a rug that only fills in the open L-shaped area. If that doesn't make sense, go to the Live It Journal. We've got tons of tips on rug placement, rug sizes, just specifically for each room. So dining room, living room, and bedroom options, where to put a rug, if you have side tables, all of that stuff. 
We've got lots of tips and lots of things for you guys to use as references and resources to help you guys make sure you get this one right, because this is important. As you guys have heard me say, a rug really grounds a space. It helps open up walkways, so if you are in a smaller area, it's gonna really help direct the path of traffic, and it just really defines space. I really utilize rugs to define, okay, this is the living room, and this is the office, and here's the dining room, and it kind of separates it in a way without having walls inhibiting your living area. The fourth common mistake that you might be making around your house is hanging your art too high. So in theory, your art when you hang it should be close to your eye level. If you live in a really large house, you probably should adjust this to keep the scale of the space so you can bump it up a few inches. But in general, oh hi Scout. But in general, you want to try to make sure that the center of your art pieces are about eye level, which is around 60 inches or so. Obviously, this is subjective depending on how tall you are and depending on how big your space is, but it's kind of like a good generalized rule of thumb. Another great way to make sure that things are kind of at the right height, if you have a large piece of art or a large mirror, I try to make sure if it's near a window or a door frame, that the height of the door frame and the height of the art are somewhat similar, give or take a few inches. But if you need additional help when it comes to hanging art, how to hang it in vertical spaces, horizontal spaces, awkward hallways, I have a blog post that I put up on the blog this week where I give you 10 foolproof hacks on how to hang art all around your home. So if you wanna check that out, click down below and go visit the blog. The fifth common mistake people make is they put all of their furniture up against the walls and it's like they're afraid to be anywhere but backed up against the wall. Instead of pushing everything up against the walls, you want it to feel lively and conversational. So bringing your furniture away from those walls, setting them up in different angled areas will again allow for a better community feeling, better conversation areas, and it doesn't make the space feel really awkwardly broken up and just like starkly open. You want it to feel cozy. You want to bring stuff in, but you want to do in a way that allows for convenient walkways that doesn't block doors and there's kind of a strategy behind doing that if you check out the live it journal we've got lots of information and resources on how to do that effectively and how to do that the right way so click below and check it out the sixth and last common mistake that people make around their homes is they go to furniture stores and they buy a furniture set and that's what they put into their bedrooms or into their homes there's nothing inherently wrong with the furniture set but instead of just buying the set all at once you want your home to feel kind of curated and that it actually reflects your personal style so it's kind of fun to add in a dining table that's kind of maybe one style and a bookcase that kind of maybe is another style, making sure that the colors are connected and there are some similar repeating attributes of them. That way it's not drastically different. Remember my 60, 30, 10 rule? You guys can click the video link below to check out that reference. Just make sure that you have some things that speak to each other because you want it to feel cohesive, but you don't want it to feel so matchy matchy that it's not unique, if that makes sense. So skip the bedroom sets or the furniture sets and go for something a little bit more Diverse, unique, and fabulous. Okay, you guys, those are the six common mistakes that we make around our home. And again, don't worry if you feel like, oh my gosh, I have all of these around my house. I have been there. So hopefully these things will help you become aware of them, tackle them as you have time. And if you wanna know additional mistakes you might be making around your place and you want to know the answers on how to fix them and make it look better, you can just tell it looks kinda off, go check out the Live It Journal and hopefully that'll help. Okay, if you guys have not thumbs up this video, be sure to do that. Hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.